Hey guys, in this video I am going to review this power station from EcoFlow brand. This is River 2 version and uh, this is smaller sister of Delta 2 power station that I recently did review. In this video we are going to do in-depth testing for this power station. We will try to charge this from solar panel. We will do capacity test, load test, we will see how this power station performs and we will disassemble this to see how well it built inside. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. In package with the power station, we're getting cable first accessory port, 12 volts port. On the second side is XT60 connector. We can use this to discharge station uh, and the charge station as well. Then we're getting power cable and then we're getting instruction. If we look at this power station, in the middle we have this screen. It's a pretty tiny screen, but we have a lot of information here. We have how many hours left to run power station with the current load. Then we see percentage of charging and then we see how many watts right now we have from input side and how much, how much watts we are drawing from this power station. Additionally, we have icons such as Wi-Fi icon. We can connect this power station to Wi-Fi and control their application. We, we're gonna test this as well. And then on the front side, we have a accessory 12 volts port, which can be activated with this button. Then we have three USB ports, two USB-A and USB-C port. And then we have two AC outlets, which can be activated or deactivated with the button. And uh, on the back side, we have fan to cool the station down. Then we have uh, AC120 input ports. So it has built-in charger. We don't need any other power supply to charge the station. We just need this cable. And then we have XT60 connector where we can charge this using car with a 12 volts battery, or we can attach solar panel right here and charge the station. The specification for this power station first, it has LFP batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries, where you can get up to 2000 cycles plus. They are claiming that uh, you can get 3000 cycles with 80% of capacity right here. Um, capacity for the battery is uh, 256 watt hours and the AC output for this power station is up to 300 watts with 600 watts surge power. From a uh, 12 volts output we can get up to 12.6 uh, volts with uh, 8 uh, 8 amps, uh, 100 watts maximum. For USB-A we can get 2.4 amps and USB-C is uh, 3, 3 amps uh, up to 20 volts, 60 watts maximum. To charge this power station we can use AC power. It can charge with 300 uh, watts. That means we can recharge this power station in uh, back in uh, less than one hour. And uh, for DC input, it is accepting 11 to 30 volts DC, 8 amp maximum. And uh, we can charge with 110 watts maximum. So here's the specification for this power station. And now let's test output ports. Right now power station at 27%. I will start with accessory port and uh, I will plug Delta 2 to Delta 2 charging input. And we draw about 86, 87 watts. Now for USB ports, for USB A's, we can draw up to 2.4 amps. Let's try that. 2.4 right here. And voltage is a uh, 4.67 volts. Now let me connect my laptop to USB-C port. And USB-C port should give us about 60 watts. And we draw right now 67 watts combined, so 10 watts for USB A port and uh, about 57 watts for or 55 watts for USB C port. And now let's test AC output. So we draw about 300 watts, which is maximum for this power station. And let's check voltage and uh, if it's pure sign power station. So we got 120 volts. And right here is a pure sign, 60 hertz output. And now let's do capacity test. Power station is charged to 100%. And I'm going to discharge this with the 200 watts. And 
and uh, let's come back in about 59 minutes and we'll see how many watt hours we are getting from this power station. Let's try to connect this power station to solar panel. This EcoFlow solar panel by facial to 200 or 220 watts, and the power station can accept only 110 watts. So what I'm gonna do, I will just partially shade this solar panel. So we're gonna get about maybe a little bit more than 100 watts, but let's connect and see how it works. So we're getting a little bit more than 110 watts, it was 136 in peak and the uh, MPPT charge controller just reduced output. So maybe we can even partially shade this part so to get output as exactly 110 watts. And now let's disassemble the station and see how well it's built inside. Uh, right here power station fully disassembled right here is the main inverter parts then we have this control panel and then battery unit uh, battery management system on the top and if we turn this back we have this uh, huge cylindrical cells it looks like it's exactly the same cells as used in the delta 2 but here we have a 4s configuration and uh, before assembling this power station back, I want quickly to test one item. I noticed when we are at 95% and still charging, input for charging is about 200 watts. And uh, as you might know that lithium batteries, when they almost fully charged, we need to decrease amperage because we can overcharge these cells. So what I'm going to do right now is to charge this power station at 95% or 98%, and then I will measure individual cell voltage to make sure that uh, this power station is not overcharging cells just to achieve this quick charging. And uh, while we're waiting for full charge, let me review application and see what kind of control we have. Uh, we have this EcoFlow application to control this unit. We can connect via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Right now it's connected to my home Wi-Fi and uh, I can control this unit from anywhere. I don't need to be in a close proximity. And um, if I select River, right here we can see information how many watts input and output we have right now so then we have individual information how many watts we're getting from AC solar or USB-C port if we swipe on the right we have uh, information how many watts we draw from each output port and we have these toggles to control AC output and DC output so we can enable or disable this and uh, again if the station connected to Wi-Fi we can do it from anywhere now if we click on this settings button right here we can rename power station then we can set how fast we want to charge our power station how many watts we want to draw from ac side so from anywhere from 50 watts to 360 watts so then for car input we can select how many amps we want to draw from a car uh, car accessory port on the dc mode we can select if we recharging our power station from car or solar recharging if we want to enable mppt charge controller and we have after mode so then we have x boost option uh, right now it's enabled and uh, what it does uh, it's um, it's going to reduce voltage on ac side if uh, if our appliance is overloading the station so instead of shutting down, it will reduce voltage and uh, will keep uh, working. If we don't want to have voltage reduced, we can disable this function and the power station will just shut down. So next setting, we have a charging level. We can set anywhere from a discharge level from anywhere from zero to 30% and to charge anywhere from 50 to 100%. 
So this is a good, so this option is going to help you to extend battery life. Then we have all of these timeouts when to shut down this power station. And in the other section, we have firmware update. Uh, looks like I have update upgrade available right now. In the help center, we can read some FAQ. And uh, then in the specification, we can see information about this power station. It's static information. We don't have parameters here to see how many times we charged or discharged our station. And the last parameter is a temperature unit. We can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. However, I don't see anywhere in application where I can read the information uh, about temperature of the unit. And here's a quick overview for this app. And the power station right now at 99% and we're charging with 250 watts. Let's quickly check what is the voltage on cells. 3.53. 355 and 7, 3.61 and 351. So it looks like cell number three is the highest charged cell. And let's just keep monitoring this cell and uh, make sure it's not overcharged. All right, that's a great sign. So exactly 365 volts, which is the maximum voltage for lithium iron phosphate battery. Charging station did stop charging and did not overcharge cell. This is really great to see. And, uh, I created my list of uh, pros and cons about this power station after testing and using this power station. Let's start with items that could be improved. Number one is LED light. For lightweighted power stations, I'm expecting people is gonna take them to the camping and uh, I really would love to see some LED lights in this power station. Second item is a minor, it's just a rubber plug for this accessory port. It's easy to drop something there and short it. And uh, I guess it's gonna cost $1 just to add this plug. For items I do like about this power station, I have five of them. So first is the quality. Uh, in the general, it feels like pretty solid power station and uh, I did enjoy testing this. Uh, second uh, is a fast charging. We can recharge this power station in uh, one hour. I did have suspicion that uh, they can sacrifice cells life to achieve this fast charging, but, uh, it, uh, but I confirmed that they are not overcharging these cells. Number three is application. And uh, it's great to see that this power station has Wi-Fi option. So we can use this even as a smart outlet. And uh, it's great to see that we can control how much we can discharge and charge this station and we can control uh, limit how fast we want to recharge this station. So we can extend the battery life. Number four is LFP batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries. In the manual they're saying it's 3000 plus cycles up to 80% of capacity. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be 3000 cycles, but uh, in the general lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, always advertised as a 2000 cycles plus. So even if you're going to discharge and charge this station every day it's going to be um, how many like six uh, years till this power station will reach 80 percent of this capacity and the last one is a screen it's a tiny screen but we have all information we want to read especially like that input and output values separated here we can see how many watts we are pushing into power station and how many watts we draw from power station because i saw on some power stations this value combined and uh, we don't know like what is output for solar panel for example right now that's all i want to say about this power station i hope you did enjoy tests and review for this unit if you like this video consider subscribing to this channel and uh, hit like button and as always thank you for watching and see you later